A dog or cat with three legs really can live a full and happy life, but the decision to amputate can be filled with doubt, anxiety, guilt and stress. Well, today I'm speaking to two experts, Renee and Jim, who run tripods.com, about what you need to know if you're thinking about amputation and then how you can optimise your dog and cat's health after they've had that surgery. <coughs> Renee and Jim, welcome to the show. Really excited to have you on today. Thank you. It's great to be here. We really, really excited to be here. To, this. so you guys run this amazing community online for pets and pet parents who have dealt or are dealing with the prospect of an amputation. And, you know, it's, it's a very specific niche and you've got a fantastic and a bittersweet backstory about how you got into that, which I think really highlights the importance of the work that you do. So I wondered if you wanted to tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you got into the work that you're doing. Here's what happened. Um, we had a dog. He was our first dog, love of our life, named Jerry. And he was super active, uh, German Shepherd mix, great dog. He used to go hiking with us and, and running and camping and very outdoorsy. And one day we came home from a backpacking trip and he jumped out of the back of the truck and yelped. And we were like, whoa, what's this all about? A few weeks go by, the limp gets worse. And we take him to the vet. And the vet doesn't really know what to make of it, but says, well, he's eight years old. He's probably got some arthritis. arthritis. So um, this went on for a few weeks and we could not figure out what was going on until one day Jim was massaging him, trying to just palpate around his body yeah. to figure out why, you know, what was that? Mm. What was that limp? And uh, Jerry let out a yelp when Jim touched his scapula. Uh, fast forward, we found out he had osteosarcoma. After a second and third opinion, um, yeah, a vet tech at the first vet who kind of refused to say, I don't know, um, encouraged us to get a second opinion, which we always encourage people to do if there's any question whatsoever and that vet was you know said i don't know but it looks odd you should go to uc davis which is one of the best um teaching hospitals in the nation here um so we did and they did the mri and there was a large tumor in the scapula growing inward so we couldn't really see it yeah. but it was really starting to cause pain mm. on the inside and the, the whole experience kind of threw us into the world of oh of cancer and dogs and, and veterinary medicine, really, because we had no experience with it at all. We didn't even know that dogs got cancer at the time. Um, Jerry had always been a healthy, healthy puppy and never had any issues. So this was like, whoa, trial by fire. Exactly, the resources available exactly online. Um, so we thought we might not go through with it, you know? And then we saw on YouTube, uh, a giant Great Dane digging up a gopher with one front leg. We thought, <laughs> if that dog can do it, our dog's half the size, he'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Because as as cancer diagnosis goes, osteosarcoma is is up there as the worst or one of the worst. By you know, by no means. So, did you get a lot of did you get a lot of good guidance or on with from the vets and from the team at UC Davis, or was it a little bit like, well, I I we kind of left in the dark, and so that's what led to the creation of of tripods. Well, what happened was they were they were pretty matter of fact, you know, and they yeah. said you can you can take the leg off and, and you can maybe get a year if, if you're really lucky, but probably only like six months if you don't yeah. do chemotherapy and, and actually treat the cancer. But you'll be treating the pain and your dog will have a better quality of life if you get rid of that leg with the, yeah. with the tumor. And we couldn't believe that. We were like, how can a dog be happy on three legs? We had yeah. never seen a three legged dog in our lives. Yeah. Um, so they, they presented us with very clinical information and they were very honest. And as you know, vets see three-legged pets all the time. It's not a big deal. But to yeah. us as the pet parent, it, it just came as such a shock. So when we did find that dog on YouTube who was digging with, with one front leg, that kind of um, gave us the confidence in, to pursue amputation. But we still kind of felt like oddballs, you know? We were like, yeah. uh, are we those weird people who will just go to the ends of the earth for their animal? And, and it just didn't feel natural at the time. But they did give us plenty of options. You know, they, yeah. they, you know they're a teaching institution. They gave us all of the options we could do with or without chemo. And that's when they, I first started hearing them refer to a three-legged dog as a tripod, like yeah. 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 And I went home and decided to register the domain tripods with a paw in the middle to kind of take that back and, and empower the name <laughs> for those people that think, you know, my, my dog's awesome on three legs. So we um, 
when faced with this news, we were at a play, place in our life where it was, you know, we're op operating a business and Jerry was what we called our chief fun officer. Mm -hmm. And we owed it to him to kind of ride out the rest of our time together the best we possibly could. And Renee had this crazy idea one day and said, we should sell the business, sell the home and buy an RV and travel with Jerry. He's only got, you know, six to 10 months to live, they say. And yeah. We did that. We quickly sold. We were on the road at the six month point or so. And he ended up living two years. And this was without chemotherapy. It, it, was, uh, it was still a big deal to us to have a, a three legged dog. We just, you know, we, we didn't feel like it was a natural thing. So we started writing about it because both of us are writers at heart. And when yeah. we started this little blog on tripods, people started contacting us asking questions about their own animals' uh, amputation. Um, whether they were just presented with the news that their animal had to lose a leg or they'd been dealing with it for a while. But yeah. what they were looking for was some sense of community that they weren't alone. And then suddenly we realized we're not alone either. And, yeah. and the light bulb yeah. kind of went on and Jim put discussion forums on the website. And that's when it really grew because we could all talk to each other and share our experiences. And suddenly it occurred to us that it was that sharing of information that was really helpful to people who were going through this because a lot of times you're dealing with a cancer diagnosis it is a usually a pretty grim prognosis yeah. and we just thought why not make that time as great as possible and our current dog wyatt just kicked the table so sorry <laughs> about that <laughs> real life but here this you know this first year on the road with jerry i just wanted to share the world and take videos and show him running and playing and we didn't know a thing about rehab or yeah. you know the Pre injury prevention the altered and, stance and, yeah, and the altered we, gait and we were throwing frisbee on the beach with him yeah and the more and more we learned and and talked to veterinarians and heard the stories of all the people in our community our shift kind of turned to providing qualified information from you know verifiable sources. We, I'm, I'm a journalist by trade and, and oh. Jim is too. He comes from a writing background. And so we didn't want to put bad information out there or just anecdotal stuff. We really wanted to make sure that if we were going to have a presence on the internet and share this experience with others, that that information that we put out had to be qualified good stuff. So that's when we really turned to people like yourself and, and just started asking a lot of questions and, and sharing it with the community. And it's been a learning experience for us ever since. As a, as a veterinarian, we see these things on a very regular basis. And so we maybe, I guess, not lose the human aspect of things, but we can come across as maybe very matter of fact and you know very fact based without considering that emotional component. So that's where it's fantastic that there is the, the community that you guys provide. And I'm sure you've, you've had people from all walks of life reaching out for you, um, to you. Um, when it comes to people deciding to amputate, I guess one thing that I see a lot more of for reasons is actually trauma and, and really nasty traumatic injuries rather than cancer. And maybe that's the, you know, the dog population and the breeds involved. Um, but are you finding that as well? Are you getting that really mixed bag or does cancer seem to be the predominant cause? Um, you know, actually for us, cancer is the number one reason people join us. And okay. it's closely followed by accidents and, and trauma, though. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we do see a lot of, of cancer situations um, and a, very, a wide range of cancers. I mean, not just dogs. We see cats with osteosarcoma, which really isn't supposed to happen. No, I mean, no. it's so rare. But we see it all the time in our community because it's such a small little corner of, yeah. of yeah. the parenting world. But yeah. we've seen them all, everything from snake bites and, you know, accidents and car traumas, but the horses kicking them, dogs getting shot. Cats um, getting stuck in bed springs. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh. Small dogs getting <laughs> yes. stepped on. So people find us for a number of reasons, yeah. but we have no judgment and don't say we're not pro amputation and we're not anti amputation. We like to present all of the facts and make sure that there's, you know, enough information there for people to do their homework and make an educated decision and, and work with their veterinarians that's the number one thing yeah. we like to provide a framework of questions that they can talk to their vet about um, rather yeah. than telling them well we think you should do this because we yeah. would never do that um, yeah. everybody's different so we we give them things to think about and go back to take to their vet and and discuss and you know i one of the biggest compliments that we can ever receive is when a veterinarian 
has an experience with one of our members and they turn around and refer another client of theirs to us. Yeah. So um, it's, it's such a huge honor when that happens. Some people do, you know, unfortunately the majority of people find tripods after the fact. Sure. So there's not mm -hmm. a lot of preparation. Yeah. They come home with a, you know, bag of medicine and some discharge papers and they Google and they find people who understand what they're going through. And we like to say, we kind of, save you veterinarians the time spent answering those emotional questions yeah. you know the fact that your dog may not poop for 24 to 48 hours you know we all know that now we didn't know that when mm -hmm. you know our dog yeah. had an amputation but they don't yeah. necessarily need to pick up the phone every single time something happens yeah and with um with people that are finding you before the event maybe they're exploring their options what do you find are the biggest their biggest concerns when it comes to amputation um is it because they're not seeing it they're they're worried about their dog's quality of life afterwards what why why are they struggling to make that decision you know, it, it all comes down to they're worried about quality of life um a lot of people uh it's kind of a toss-up between that and if i'm going to amputate but my pet has cancer and they're only given a one-year prognosis is it going to be worth it for me yeah. to put them through that and we have been able to answer that question by doing surveys through the years. Uh, we take um, members' uh, experiences, they, they fill out a questionnaire, and we call it our quality of life survey. And every single time we've done one, only maybe two or three people out of 200 or so who've answered the surveys have said that they would not do it again, okay. even if yeah. they only had a few months of time left with their animal. And they all say they, they did it, and they were glad they did it because they had a really nice quality of life and a, a much better way to say goodbye to the animal than they yeah. would have if they had to make that decision under duress. It's yeah. that quality of life that is really most important. And a lot of yeah. people don't understand until they talk to the people in our forums and get a, get a grip on it. They all think, how long does my dog have? Yeah. Well, okay, your dog may only have four to six months, but he's going to be in excruciating pain. You could, you know, the amputation won't get rid of the cancer, but it will get rid of the pain. And you know, your recovery pain could last 10 to 14 days. And then it's just a matter of doing some rehab and getting back to the new normal. So we like to tell people it's not about quantity of life. It's about quality. That's absolutely the case when it comes to any kind of cancer treatment that we give as vets. We're, it's all about quality. We don't go for the big big doses of chemotherapy and the big remission you know aim that we do in people so that's i guess another fear that i hear a lot when we talk about chemotherapy that we think hair falling out vomiting diarrhea you know being an absolute mess and and yeah that's not our aim it's all about quality of life which is yeah what i'm a massive com a proponent of so yeah i guess your advice would be then if if you, you know if there's no other option then you know absolutely jump into that decision and and an amputation is 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 going to be beneficial is there anything else you'd share with people when they if they're still struggling a lot of people come to us or a lot of uh, couples come to us rather where one of the spouses mm -hmm. is all against it and the other one's yeah. for it usually um women join our forums and say, my husband's all against it. <laughs> and it's kind of a macho thing with some guys out there. They couldn't, you know, I wouldn't do that to my dog kind of thing. And the majority of times we ask, you know, encourage him to sit down with you and watch some of these videos, jump on one of our live webinars and just kind of hear the facts or download one of the eBooks and see, you know, do your homework. Don't just think well, how bad it may be. And it's just, it's not worse, it's different. It's a yeah. new normal. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. It's a new normal, and it you know, it just requires a little bit of rethinking about your dog's daily activities or your cats and what they need to look like in order to preserve that quality of life and make sure that your new tripod doesn't get injured uh, after losing a leg because they they do tend to be a little more prone to injury after if you let them overdo it, and we yeah. know that from experience. It happened to us with our dog Jerry. So that segues in really nicely into optimizing our quality of life for our dogs and cats that have that have had to have an amputation so what are, are your top tips for that because they absolutely can live a really full life can't they oh absolutely absolutely and the number one thing that you can do to help your tripod be strong and, and healthy and happy is to watch their weight yeah. and time and time again we've talked to veterinarians and we have seen the results of animals who have lost weight after amputation when they needed to lose a few pounds and what an incredible difference it makes in their mobility. We have a ton of weight loss success stories 
Um, that's the number one thing, especially when you're really feeling sorry for your pet and you just want to cuddle them and give them lots of treats because you feel bad they lost a leg. Don't do it or give them <laughs> carrots or, or peas or something, but you know, don't give them heavy calorie foods. So um, keeping the weight down. It's so true. Uh, we We've interviewed numerous veterinarians at conferences and such, and the number one thing they all agree on is weight management. And the second is um, never underestimating you know, proper rehabilitation. Unfortunately, there are still vets out there who say, oh, go let him be a dog, he'll be fine. And, and yeah. you get a lot of that on and social media. Cats are completely disregarded when um, it comes to rehab therapy right. and rehabilitation, yeah. but it really benefits both of them both species can get a lot of really good things out of rehab, but most importantly, it's for the pet parent education. So that people aren't aware that, you know, a, a walk isn't exactly a strengthening exercise and they wonder yeah. why their dog's sitting down when, you know, after a short walk when he's got a missing leg. So we encourage people to consult with certified professionals. So uh, we're so into that, that our Tripods Foundation will pay for the first consultation of anyone who takes a three-legged animal to see a, a CCRT uh -huh. or a CCRP or an ACV is another one, certified yeah. rehab therapists. Yeah. To get you know exercises they can do at home to work on core strengthening and proprioception and all these things that none of us know about until it happens to our dogs. Yeah, yeah, and you're right that you know that helps build up muscles, it strengthens ligaments, and it helps I guess ultimately protect the the remaining the remaining limb from from injury because that's the biggest thing. And then as far as exercise goes, what kind of um, activities do you think are, are, are the best thing that a tripod can do and which ones should they absolutely be avoiding? Renee's interviewed a number of rehab therapists over the years. Um, so we're kind of speaking from experience there, but the the worst detriment, the most detrimental exercise is what they call explosive exercises. Yeah. The fetch it, the chuck it, the frisbee, frisbee the fly ball, um, dock diving, those kind of things where they're springing off of those remaining limbs. That's not necessarily favorable. And it really, um, it, it also kind of depends on the dog or the, or the cat. Just what is their pre-amputation fitness level like? So we really, really want people to watch that activity and rethink what fun means to your pet. Fun doesn't have to mean running around the dog park for an Exhausting hour and yeah. getting so exhausted they fall down. Rethink yeah. what fun means. To a lot of pets, a brain game is a lot more fun than throwing a ball. Food puzzles are yeah. so great for tripods. Um, you know, feed them their, their meals that way instead of just throwing them in a bowl. Um, yeah. Anything that works their brain over their, their body is, is super beneficial. You want to do both, but um, strike that careful balance. And again, the way to learn how to do that is to work with a professional who understands the needs of your pet. And again, it comes back to adapting to that new normal. Every single dog is different. Every cat's case is going to be different, but their life does need to adapt. They have muscle groups that need to reposition and, and, and compensate for the missing limb. So one of the biggest steps we tell people and that we've heard is that shorter, more frequent walks throughout mm -hmm. the day are much better than one or two long walks a day, especially when it comes to a, a new amputee animal. Yeah, yeah. I guess a lot of those points, uh, just as you were going through them, actually, they're, they're ones that are fantastic advice for any dog owner. You know, that mental stimulation is is huge and all too often they're left at home with not a lot to do and nothing to stimulate them and we get all kinds of behavioral problems for example and and i know in our older dogs a lot of the um arthritis vets um canine arthritis management is one you know particular community they're advocating you know get rid of that ball chucker don't do any of those exercises because the stress and strains you're absolutely right that puts through the joint is is immense compared to other types of exercise so yeah, I guess maybe our tripods aren't all that different after all, but we just need to be really, you know, mindful because the consequences of injury to the remaining leg, you know, can potentially be quite catastrophic, can't they? So, um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. So that's some amazing information and advice there. You've clearly got a huge amount of knowledge and experience to share, um, you know, on the blog and in your communities and things, but you've written kind of a number of guides and, and other resources. So um, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about that if they want to dive into this in a little bit more detail? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, there's a vast amount of resources available at Tripods and the, we host 1500 three-legged dog and cat blogs and thousands of discussion forum topics. And to save people the time spent 
searching and surfing and trying to find all the available information that is there for free. We developed eBooks early on, one of them which was called Three Legs and Despair. It's a canine amputation handbook for the pet owner. It goes through, you know, making the decision to amputate during amputation, after amputation, recovery, and it's kind of a basics guide on, you know, how to cope with amputation recovery and care before during and after and we have just now recently launched a fourth edition new and approved ebook filled with direct links to videos and podcast interviews and and forum topics and articles we've written but now um, it's now available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback in a stripped down basics version it's more affordable and covers all the basic it's our tripod basic series that's three legs and a spare the second one was loving life on three legs that's more focused on on rehab and fitness. and fitness and then we uh late we, well we also have cool tips for tripod cats can't forget the yeah. cats yes we have a book <laughs> dedicated solely to feline amputation and, and care after surgery so that's one of my favorites and then late last year, we published the story about how it all began. Um, Be more dog, that's Jerry. <laughs> and it's kind of the lessons we learned from Jerry when we hit the road in an RV, you know, resilience, adaptation, awareness, acceptance, um, perseverance, those sort of things. And it gets into how and why we developed the Tripods community, which we're still running. But more, more importantly, it's, it's about how to follow your pet's lead in this situation because they handle it way better than you think yeah. they will and yeah. way better than people do. So yeah. that's, we wanted to share that message with yeah, I mean, that's so adaptable. I mean, I think um, you're aware I've had a um, my own tripod as well. So Stella, my my cat, she was a stray that was brought to brought to the clinic and she had some horrendous injuries to one of her front legs and, and, and lost her leg. And um, we tried to rehome her. And of course, um, vets and nurses are always inundated with strays and things. So she ended up coming home. And yeah, she had, a, a, yeah, she had and continues to have a fantastic, um, fantastic life. So I'd echo that. It's amazing how... Um, adaptable our, our pets are and, and like you said at the beginning the recovery from surgery is actually incredibly rapid and they just get on with it don't they it's so important that you recognize and treat arthritis effectively in your tripod and you can check out my playlist linked on screen for everything you need to know about that and until next time I'm Dr Alex this is our pets health because they're family